Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and this is the XSmart 3 from QD, a small format next generation 3D printer that is beginner friendly at a beginner friendly price. And yes, I am going to be calling this company QD because while it might be Queedy, I think QD is just a little bit more cute. And if you're new to 3D printing or just want to do something new with 3D printing, you're in the right place. And I hope that you'll join me at my Discord where we have a great community of people who are doing amazing things with 3D printing and helping each other get better. I hope to see you there. So the XSmart 3 is a 3D printer that I had a lot of turmoil getting up and running with. In fact, this here is a box of parts for this 3D printer that I have taken off and replaced with other parts for this 3D printer. Yes, my journey from when I got this 3D printer to now has been a long and weird one. The XSmart 3 is a 3D printer that checks all the boxes. It is fast, it runs clipper, it's core XY movement, it's fully enclosed, it comes with all the bells and whistles already ready to go, you just unbox and go, and it comes at a price of only $300, making it a great beginner-friendly option. Its build volume is slightly smaller than the 200 standard that most 3D printers are built to. It's a 180 by 185 by 1. 70 or something like that uh, let's just call it a 175 or 180 build volume but regardless it's still big enough to do most common 3d prints and and that makes it very functional while it has a mini price it is not totally a mini 3d printer but let's go back to the beginning with this machine unboxing super easy mostly because there's nothing to assemble it's already ready to go as is you just pull it out take off a couple of things that are limiting the axis movements and you're ready to go fired it up clipper interface that's good ran the calibration i don't recall if they explained how to do the calibration or not in the manual and i seem to have lost the manual but i don't recall making a note that it was badly documented so Let's just say that it's sufficiently documented. And then I loaded up their slicer. And yes, this has its own slicer, which is an obvious fork of Cura. But I do appreciate that they made their own slicer that, first of all, is you know perfectly configured for these machines. And secondly, makes it super easy to send prints over Wi-Fi. It just simplifies that process. If you want to do that in plain Cura, there's a bunch of plugins you have to load in and it's difficult to know if they're working or not. Their own slicer, it's super easy. Push button, go. They've already got it set up. So super appreciate that. And so, yeah, I was ready to start a few prints. Now, I'm working on a project right now where I am making some bins out of printer block connectors that you can connect and make organizers. To test this 3D printer, I loaded up a couple of these printer block bins, print a bins, sort of blocks. You know what? I need to workshop the name of these. And if you guys want to help, jump on my Discord. But they all failed. Okay. They were printed in PLA and just a couple of millimeters up the nozzle jammed. And I unjammed it and tried it again. And they jammed again. So I contacted QD support and said, your machine's jamming a lot. And they went, ah, they were, they were quick to respond and went, yeah, we know this issue. This is a known issue with the early releases. Sorry about that. We'll send you a couple of parts. So I sat there with this 3D printer, taken apart, waiting for a couple of pieces to come in. And when those pieces arrived, slapped them in and started printing again. And I managed to get complete prints out of it in PLA at that point. But printer block needs connectors. And I like to print my connectors in PETG. So I loaded up some PETG printed it out and got the most monumental jam ever. I'm serious. I've never seen anything jam like this before. It went all the way up, heat creep all the way almost to the feed nozzle. And then it fused with the plastic parts in the drive motor. There was no fixing this. 
Again, I contacted QD support. And again, they were quick and responsive and went, hmm, that's weird. We'll send you another part. And again, I had to wait for a little while for a part to arrive. The parts arrived, I disassembled the hot end, put it back together with the new parts, and in the process noticed that the hot end had a cutter on it. They, at one point, wanted to have a way to cut the filament in an automated manner, similar to the way that you would see it on Bamboo Labs 3D printers. Does that mean that this unit was going to come with a, a multi-color, multi-change system in there so that this could do multi-color? Uh, maybe, but the new hot end that they sent me didn't have that functionality. Then I printed with the new hot end and printed Pet G again, and I got some serious major heat creep. The plastic got soft all the way up past the feed system and jammed up so bad that it actually fused with the plastic parts where it wasn't supposed to happen. Yuck. So again, I contacted QD Tech, and again, they were quick to respond and go, ooh, we will send you a new one of those and a way to make that not happen which they did, which I installed, and now this machine is together complete. It prints PLA, it prints PETG, it prints all the materials perfectly, and I have not had a problem with this machine. And as it is right now, I actually am really pleased with this machine. It's so pleased, in fact, that I am considering making this be the machine that I take with me when I go to fairs and events to have running because one, it's small. Two, it's fully enclosed, which means that kids' fingers are going to keep away from it. And three, it's fast. And I like having a fast 3D printer that can finish multiple prints in a day. But regardless of where it is now, I have to admit that there was a time where I had more parts for this machine than prints from it. So what does that mean for the new tier list of 3D printers that I'm going to be ranking this on? Well, it gets a little bit nebulous. Again, I can't review a 3D printer that I don't have. And based on the experience that I had with this 3D printer, the highest tier, and again, this, this list is completely subjective, so higher doesn't necessarily mean better in this case. But the best place that I could put it on, I think, would be for the pros because while yes it did require a little bit of effort on my part to get it up and running and going well qd tech was always fast and responsive in getting me the parts that i need and getting me the help that i need and that that is invaluable i feel like to be for the pro if it has you know, some faults that need to be fixed, they have to be easily fixable. The resources have to be available, the parts have to be available, and thus far QD Tech did satisfy that. However, if the printer that they are sending out to people, not the pre-release unit, but the final unit, is this unit that I have, I would have no qualms whatsoever putting this in the for all category. In fact, I might even put this as a recommendation for people because at the price, at the capability that it can do, it is absolutely recommendable. But I don't know if this is the unit that you guys will get. So if anybody does buy this 3D printer, pull it out of the box and have a good time with it, please hunt down this video, put in the comments, say, this sucker is a beast out of the box. Let me know so that I can know whether this goes in the for all or possibly even recommendation category. But the machine that I have, I'm going to put it in for the pros for now. But that said, I'm not disappointed at all with the XSmart 3. And it's a 3D printer that I'm actually going to keep around for a while, which means that I may have to get rid of another one of my 3D printers soon. But that's it for this video. I wanna thank you very much for watching and I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.